Hi, my name is Dustin Harder, and this is The Vegan Roadie. And here we are, Rome, the capital of Italy, for the final episode in The Vegan Roadie Season 3. With over 4.5 million residents, it's also the most popular city in the country. Rome's history spans more than 2,500 years, with Roman mythology dating the founding of Rome at around 753 BC. The area has been inhabited for much longer, making it one of the longest occupied places in Europe. It's ranked at number 13 of cities visited in the world, making it the number one tourist attraction in Italy. The Romans have a style of cooking all their own. The cuisine has evolved through periods of social, cultural, and political changes. Once influenced heavily by ancient Greek culture, the inspiration then shifted to the Renaissance, Roman Jews, and products available from the region of Campania. Fried artichokes, spaghetti carbonara, and gnocchi are all dishes that originated in Rome. But what exactly does Rome have to offer this plant-powered traveler these days? Let's find out. I'm the Vegan Rodi, and I have one mission, to keep it vegano well on the go. And delicious, that's what Wani has to offer. Wani explores Italian baked goods and beyond under the vegan eye. They even have vegan croissants. This is definitely a place you can take an entire group and know that everyone will be satisfied. Wani opened in 2016 with the sole purpose of creating baked goods that serve as a compassionate gap between people and food, proving to the masses that animals are not ingredients. Wani has a variety of sweet treats to choose from, including cakes, puddings, cookies, cupcakes, parfaits, and even croissants, filled with different flavors like chocolate, vanilla, and vegan Nutella. My favorite is hands down the bomba. Think a traditional zeppoli, you know, fried dough, only filled with sweet and tart lemon custard or velvety smooth chocolate cream. The team at Wani is enthusiastic about creating a better world one bite at a time. You will be greeted with a smile and a group of people who truly put their heart and soul into what they create. They even sell merch that is a must purchase with the profits going towards a local animal sanctuary. They have a library dedicated to vegan literature to check out to expand your plant-based repertoire. We, we believe huh? that animals are to be free. They also offer three savory specials a day, ranging from sandwiches to quiche. The olive and artichoke quiche was a standout, bursting with flavor. Wani will cater items for holidays or your special event. They had little vegan brioches stuffed with chocolate, shaped like pumpkins for Halloween on my visit. A party without a cake is just a meeting. Get your sweet treats and more and turn every gathering into a party with the help of Wani. I'm about to have an all-you-can-eat moment. Well, it's not so much all-you-can-eat as much as all-you-can-pay. Oops offers a widespread all-vegan buffet. The service is top-notch and the quality is spot on. Oops caters to a busy lunch crowd with a focus on delicious food that people love. From salads to pasta, Oops has you covered and is perfect for anyone on the go looking for a quick fix. Pick all you want from the Oops Cafe and pay by weight. If you are feeling like you need an American fix, you can get yourself a heaping spoonful of mac and cheese. With so much to choose from, I got a little bit of everything. This plate was only 12 euro. With the peace of mind that everything is vegan and such a wide variety to choose from, Oops gets an A+. Some of the popular items from the globally inspired buffet include the chickpea frittata or the fennel au gratin. But I loaded my plate up with the mac and cheese, tofu and veggies, pumpkin au gratin, stuffed mushrooms, sauteed carrots dusted with black sesame, mini couscous arancini balls, and apple and beet slaw. And for dessert, like everything else, you have options here. But today I'm in a fruity, custardy sort of mood. So I went with the house-made custard, topped with raspberry and blackberry compote. Creamy and decadent, just as I had hoped. 
Put OOPS on your list when you're in Rome. There's so much to do when you're in Rome. You can hit up the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Spanish Steps, the list goes on. And now that I've listed off all of that, I'm hungry again. Let's hit up Marguta for a one-of-a-kind dining experience. Marguta is the first vegetarian restaurant in Italy, having opened its doors in 1979. It now offers a variety of vegan options as well, with a twist on the traditional dining experience. The restaurant is separated into three categories, lunch, bistro, and dinner. It also serves as an art platform for local artists, showcasing different exhibits throughout the year. For lunch, they have a full buffet. For happy hour, they have their bistro section open to guests. Happy hours are extremely popular in Rome, and Marguta is a favorite to the locals. And for dinner, they have a section in the restaurant that is catered specifically to fine dining. While I'm certain any category at Marguta hits the spot, the chef has designed an antipasto that is just as pleasing to the eye as it is the stomach. Chef Mirko Miglioni has been making magic in kitchens all over the world. His antipasto insalata was designed with Marguta's unique flair in mind, utilizing the late Red Radicchio di Trevisio. Characterized as a specialty for its narrow, elongated leaves to create the perfect structure for the radicchio porcini insalata, including a luscious layer of chestnut puree, the radicchio tossed with pomegranate and lemon dressing, topped with thinly sliced porcini mushrooms, pomegranate seeds, and shaved chestnuts. It's clear Chef Mirko loves a good porcini mushroom, and so do I. That's why I was thrilled when he delivered the next dish, Verietta di Porcini, a quartet of porcini preparations, including a porcini cap, delicately roasted and baked with polenta, raw carpaccio style and marinated and juicy. Mushroom lovers, this game is strong and you don't want to miss it. For dessert, I tried one of their more casual offerings from the bistro menu, a zabonia served up in a rustic pot. Decadent whipped mango custard topped with fresh berries and grapes on the vine. The perfect finale. Lunch, happy hour, or dinner featuring elevated cuisine at its finest. Marguta holds the label of number one veggie restaurant in Italy with pride. Be sure to stop in when you're in Rome to see for yourself. As Americans, we love stuff, and Crispy has a lot of it. With two locations, Crispy is a small market offering specialty vegan items, fresh produce, and a full menu of sandwiches, salads, juices, smoothies, and baked goods. Stock up on your favorite vegan treats to keep your tank fueled as you roam about Rome, or sit down and take a break from the hustle and bustle and enjoy one of their many vegan offerings that are served up efficiently by a friendly staff. It doesn't matter if you're looking for vegan snacks to keep in your backpack while you're on the go, or a hot sandwich to keep you satiated after a long day of sightseeing, Crispy has you covered. Basic burgers made with either seitan or quinoa served with lettuce and tomato will satisfy your craving for American handhelds. I was partial to the vegetable ham wrap with tomatoes, mixed greens, and rice mayo on a spelt tortilla. They also keep it lean and green with a variety of salads to choose from, including the apple and spinach salad with fresh spinach, red delicious apples, celery, goji berries, and toasted almonds. And of course, I had to grab a fresh pressed juice before I left. No matter what you're doing in Rome, you can count on Crispy to help you keep it vegan while you're on the go. You might remember in Sorrento, I did a vegan gelato crawl. Well, in Rome, there is a place that is dedicated just to that. Olive Dolce opened its doors in 2015 and has remained strong ever since. 
They've expanded their menu as business has grown, from offering just a few flavors of vegan gelato to over 30, along with baked goods from tarts and cakes and other frozen treats like cakes and chocolate dipped gelato pops. With over 30 flavors to choose from, I'm like a kid in a candy shop, and you will be too. Well, the fish thing, it's like we use olive oil. We don't use any vegetable milks, we don't use soy milk, rice milk, we use olive oil instead. And that's allow, allow us actually to do an ice cream that it's creamy, like a normal one, but no milks, no creams, no eggs, anything animal, 100% vegan. Every gelato is made with a local olive oil and the ingredients are all organic and seasonal when possible. Every item is made from scratch on premises and the business is family owned and operated. Sample away to find the flavor that suits you best. They have traditional flavors as well as some unique surprise flavors like beer, pumpkin amaretto, black sesame, and red wine. Their chocolate covered gelato pops were calling my name. I had to choose between hazelnut, almond, and coconut. I went with the hazelnut and wasn't disappointed. Unique flavors, a variety of frozen treats with everything handcrafted in-house. You can't go wrong with Olive Dolce. My last stop on our journey in Rome is a place called So What? Cause you know what? Who cares? So what? Owned and operated by Alessandra and Paolo Petrolia. Paolo also serves as the chef. At So What? They serve up funky and fresh cuisine in a fun atmosphere with a menu design that is deeply rooted in Italian cooking. Some ingredients are grown in the owner's garden and the dishes are organic whenever possible and prepared fresh daily, including a rotating board of specials. One of the most popular items on the menu is the Neapolitan deep fried pasta with spaghetti, peas, seitan, and tomatoes in a cream sauce breaded and deep fried to a crisp perfection, served with a tomato sauce. Fried pasta, of course it's one of the most popular things on the menu. With tasty things like this, I can't wait to see what they have for dessert. The tofu cake with blueberries and ginger is a favorite. With a tofu cheesecake on a biscuit-like crust, topped with house-made blueberry jelly, and served with face, stank face pastry that is, that fits perfectly in line with So What's motto of no one likes us, we don't care. With a punk flair and a cheeky wit, what could make So What even more awesome? Oh, I know, they offer cooking classes too. Visit SoWhatVegan.com for more information on the menu, hours of operation, and when you can take one of their cooking classes. And now, let's get cooking with the Familia. While season three of The Vegan Roadie is coming to a close, I have to say it wouldn't have been possible without Vegan Travel Club and its founder, Gretchen Sheridan. I have the honor of joining Gretchen in the kitchen today for Cooking with the Familia. Gretchen has been on the crusade with her husband Pasquale since 2010 to create a travel experience in Italy that catered to those that live a plant-based lifestyle. You can find extensive information on a variety of tours they offer at vegantravelclub.com. Gretchen has family roots planted in Italy and has lived here for over 30 years. Today, she put together Fagolini con pasta. What I have loved about Italian cuisine is the complex and bright flavors that come together almost effortlessly. And this dish was no exception. Yes, of course they have processed foods in Italy, but it has warmed my heart to see how many people depend on seasonal, whole, and organic ingredients. But because Italians eat a lot of whole foods, sure. it's not, it doesn't come naturally to them to imitate something. To add more Right, so they, they can do substitutes, you know, they substitute from time to time one thing for another, but they're pretty, you know, they'll, they'll find another flavor right. to add to it right. other than an imitation. This recipe came together in a snap with some garlic, olive oil, and tomato sauce, tossed together with fresh green beans and bucatini. For a side, Gretchen threw together some cannellini beans and tomato sauce seasoned just right. We were ready for good eats. Companies like Vegan Travel Club prove just how easy it is to keep it vegan while on the go 
anywhere. Not only that, knowledgeable business owners like Gretchen bring enthusiasm and pizzazz to every tour with great storytelling and a flair for fun. You never know what's next with Gretchen and Vegan Travel Club, but you are guaranteed a trip of a lifetime you will never forget. And now it's time for you to see just how easy it is to make this at home. Let's break down the Fagiolini con pasta with the five ingredient challenge. Now, I know I said I was going to make Gretchen's pasta for the five ingredient challenge, but one of the things I have loved most about watching these pasta dishes come together in Italy is that you can pick any ingredients that you want, ingredients that you love. Just like Gretchen picked tomato sauce and fresh green beans, I'm gonna put one together with my favorite ingredients. This is the pasta olive. Your five ingredients are half cup olive oil, two garlic cloves cut in half to make four pieces, one and a half cups pitted olives sliced. Any variety you wish. I went with Kalamata and green olives to mix it up. One tablespoon crushed red pepper, and one tablespoon Italian seasoning. And of course, you need pasta. I chose bucatini. It's the same pasta Gretchen used. As you see, it's like a thicker spaghetti. I love it. Prepare the pasta according to the package directions. While the pasta is cooking, start by warming a generous amount of oil in a pot or skillet. I used a quarter cup to start with. Slowly then add a quarter cup of water with the garlic cloves and let it all simmer for five minutes releasing the flavor of the garlic. I added water so the garlic has just a little more liquid to simmer in. As you'll see, we'll add some more olive oil down the line, but I'm just being mindful of the fat content. Add another quarter cup of oil and one tablespoon crushed red pepper, one tablespoon Italian seasoning, and one and a half cups chopped and pitted olives of choice, letting it all saute for two minutes until fragrant. Remove the chunks of garlic from the oil mixture and add the prepared pasta to the oil and toss until generously coated. If I have some nutritional yeast on hand, I like to toss in a little bit and again toss the pasta until well coated. I like a lot of nutritional yeast on mine, but you do you. Plate portions and drizzle with just a little bit of olive oil. This is the Italian way. Yes, this is just a little bit of olive oil according to the Italian method. Then finish it off with a grind or a pinch of fresh black pepper. There you have it. The possibilities are endless. Hopefully this version or Gretchen's has inspired you to create your own at home with your favorite ingredients. But if you want to follow some guidelines, get mine or Gretchen's recipe at veganroadie.com and show me your recreations on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, tagging me at the vegan roadie with the hashtag Kailed it. For even more vegan roti recipes, be sure to get my new book, The Simply Vegan Cookbook. You can order it on Amazon.com or get it everywhere books are sold. Wow, that was a lot in six episodes. And that brings season three to a close, my friends. Of course, there is still a lot to uncover in the world of plant-based cuisine in Italy, but I was thrilled to get just a tiny glimpse and share it with you. Thank you for watching. And now, please click subscribe and share the Vegan Roadie channel with everyone that you can, any way that you can. It has been my mission to provide television quality programming for free for the last three years. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I have enjoyed making it. Keep on cooking, and remember, it's nice to be nice. Dustin Harder's shirts designed by Lois Eastland, NYC. Presented in partnership with Vegan Travel Club. I'm Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs>